We're blessed the Lord warriors of God. Derek Lee here. It is Sunday. A brand new week is here. And Lord God Almighty, we are grateful because we are seeing the unfolding of the Lord. We are seeing the secrets of the Lord revealed. We are seeing the heart of God revealed to his people where no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know the things that he has prepared for those who love him. So let us pray. Father, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that there is none beside you. Father God, as we come forward with a moment in the word of the Lord on today, as we prepare for this brand new week, Father God, we have this confidence that you have anointed our heads with oil. Our cups run over. Surely goodness and mercy shall accompany us. Father, we thank you on today that though our father and mother forsake us, you have made us a promise in your word that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And for that, oh God, we are grateful that we can hold on to your unchanging hands. We thank you that your love, my God, in Jesus' name is not based on anything. Your love is unconditional. And we thank you for that unconditional love on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, bless the Lord once again, warriors of God. Very quickly, I want to come to you from the book of uh, Revelation, uh, chapter number two. And there are seven churches, as the, the book of Revelation talks about, and the seven spirits of the Lord, the seven angels of the Lord, the seven messengers of the Lord have been, uh, I want to say, dispersed to these seven churches. And each of these seven churches has a specific message. And the church I want to focus on today is the church church of Pergamon. And so Revelation 2, we're going to start here at verse uh, number 12. He says, write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Pergamon, for these are the words of the one whose words pierce the hearts of men. What did he say? I know where you live, the Lord is saying, where Satan sits enthroned. He is writing to the church. He is telling the church, I know exactly where you are. I know your location. And I know that where you live, church at Pergamon, guess who also is there? Satan has been enthroned where you are. This is why he needs his church to be set ablaze, to be put on fire like never before, that the fire of the Holy Ghost mm, would take over the church of Jesus Christ because we are dwelling in places where Satan has set up his throne. He has been allowed to be enthroned, yet the remnant of God who are in the land keeps Satan in that place of position where the Lord God himself is giving him, and that is under the feet of the believers. Amen? In Jesus' name. And then we're going to go on to... Um, the next verse, and it says, I know where you live, where Satan sits enthroned, yet you still cling faithfully to the power of my name. We, we know that Satan is enthroned where we are, but we are holding on to the power of the name of Jesus because he is faithful, my God, in all of his ways. He says, you did not deny your faith in me, even in the days of my faithful martyr Antipas. You say you didn't you did not deny your faith. You remain faithful. He says, who was executed in your city? Now look at that. Where Satan lives. Where Satan lives, there is a church, yet a servant of the Most High God, a murder he is a. Uh, 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 described as Antipas, he was executed in the city where Satan lives and where the church also is located. My God. Nevertheless, he says, even though you've been faithful, you've been clinging to me, you've been believing in the power of my name. Listen, church here in the United States of America and across the globe. Nevertheless, he says, I have a few things against you. There are some among you mm, who hold to the teachings of Balaam, 
Come on. The teachings of false gods, the teachings of worship, the teachings where abominable acts are acceptable in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is to be a sacred place. However, my God, the church, he's talking to the church. The letter is sent to the church at Pergamon and he's telling them, mm -hmm, my God, Holy Ghost, thank you. There are some things he says I hold against you. He says you are holding on to the teachings of Baal. You are blending in too much with the world. Instead of you coming out from among them and be the light I've called you to be, you are blending in and it feels good for you to blend in. He said, but the time has come to take heed. Hallelujah. He says, Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to eat things that were sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Does this make sense to the church? Uh, oh my God, Holy Ghost, help me on today in Jesus name. Woo. Does this make sense to the church that he is speaking to right here in the USA that we will refer to as Pergama. He says, not only are you eating things that have been sacrificed to idols, but you are bringing things into my house that is supposed to be called the house of prayer, where you are doing things, my God, to commit sexual immorality. He says, furthermore, you have some who hold to the doctrines of the Nicolaitan tents. My God, what are the doctrines of the Nicolaitan tents? So repent. Stop believing in the false gods. Stop the compromising. Stop the manipulating of the gospel. Stop giving my people the watered down gospel. Give them the word of God. Oh my Lord. This is a moment in the word. Give them the word. Because when you give them the word, mm, the word as it, sh as it should be given and delivered. When the people gets the word, my God in Jesus name, what would they do? They will hold on to the word of God. But when we give them these watered down teachings, when we give them these watered down gospels, when we give them these teaching, you know, to listeners, they're having like itching ears. What happens? The nation is destroyed and we don't have to say anymore. So repent then for I will come quickly. See, he is such a merciful God. He is such a faithful God. He gives us time to get it right. He said, okay, I see it. I, I know exactly where you are. I know your location. I have your GPS. You can't hide from me. He said, but I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to give you a chance. So repent then, or I will come quickly to war against you. I'm telling you, he is coming quickly. I feel it. I sense it. And I almost want to say, I know it. He is coming quickly to do what? to war against them with the sword of his mouth. The Lord is coming to war against them with a sword of his mouth. He says, but the one whose heart is open. Wow. <laughs> Let him listen carefully to what the spirit is presently saying to all the churches, to everyone who is victorious. I will let him feast on the hidden manna and give him shining white stone. I give him, I believe it's a shining white stone. Let me go back here. Yeah. Give him a shining white stone and written upon the white stone is inscribed his new name. Let me tell you something. Not only are you going to get a new name, not only am I going to get a new name, the only way we will get a new name if we choose to come out from the church acts in Pergama, come on Holy Ghost in Jesus name. We come away from our idol worship, our worship of Balak. Don't be enticed by Balak. Don't be enticed by Balaam. Don't be enticed and seduced and seducted, my God, of sexual immorality. Come out from these things because the Lord sees it all anyways. Preachers in the closets, he sees it all. Molesting children, he sees it all. Nothing is hidden from him. The best to do, he says, so repent. Because he said, if you don't repent, I'm coming and I'm coming to war against you. That's what the word of God says. He says, known only to the one who receives it. So the stone that he will give with the name inscribed into the stone will be a, the name that only the one who receives the stone is going to know what is written. And it's not for you to know. It's not for me to know. It is for the one who is issuing the stone, the Lord God himself, giving the stone to the one he has selected, my God, to receive the stone with the name inscribed. He said, but my name is this. The Lord says, okay, well, that's all in, all well and, and okay. He says, but I'm changing your name. 
So I'm going to speak to the church today and let the church know that the Lord God is changing your name. I'm speaking to the church. The church is his body. The body is we the people. Amen. The precious people of God. He is not. Oh, thank you. Holy Ghost. He says, I'm not only changing your name, but I'm changing your address. I'm going to change your, your geographical location. I'm going to change the strategies you have, the ideas that you try to run. I'm going to switch that around. I'm going to change the order of things in your life, change the order of things in your workplace. I'm going to bring the change that I see that is necessary for such a time as this. You have toil long enough. You have struggle long enough. You have stress long enough. You have have fear long enough. You have been anxious long enough. The time has come for change. And I hear this in my spirit. So Father, in Jesus name, May we, oh, he says, even change in your nation. Thank you, Lord. Not only is change coming to the church, but change is coming to the nation, the USA. And I also saw in my spirit, change is coming to the nation of Israel. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the change. The change that will work together for our good and for your glory. The change in the workplace, Father God. The change in the ministries, Father God. The change, oh God. The change in our nation. The change in our nation. There is a, oh my God. There is a shocking experience that the USA is going to encounter that has never been seen or heard for in her before in the history of this nation. Oh my God. There is a change, a change, a change. And I'll just saw in my spirit a changing of the guards amen they are going to be shifting they're going to be changing their shifts oh my god Woo! the changing of the guards thank you lord in the name of jesus christ father i'm praying a special blessing over us as we go throughout the course of this week lord god let what no eye has seen what no ear has heard what no mind can comprehend be manifest in our favor and for your glory on today in the name of jesus christ the son of the living God, we pray. Father, we bless this week. We will see nothing but good. Oh my God, good cups. That's what I see. Good cups overflowing. My cup runs over. So good cups overflowing. And we will see the anointing of the Lord evidence as goodness and mercy accompany us. Now this we pray and believe by faith in Jesus Christ's most holy name. Amen. So shall it be. Until the next time, the Lord be with you and also with me. The Lord bless you and may have a fabulous blessed week and know that God has, has ordained this week for us to succeed in whatsoever our hands find to do and whom the Lord has blessed can no demon, no devil in hell or in the atmosphere, in the earth, under the earth, my God in Jesus name, sent from the left or the right can do anything about it because when you are covered, when we are covered by the blood, when the enemy sees the blood, he has to pass over. Amen. So until the next time, take care, warriors of God. Shalom.